Are you in danger or have you been of getting deported? Have you ever struggled with an eating disorder? How to make money on YouTube. My first time getting high. <laughs> Hello guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. How's it going? There has been a lot going on in my life and I've been getting lots and lots of comments about that. So I figured may as well just sit down with you guys this week and have a nice little chat. I asked you guys to ask me some questions on my Instagram and I have a bunch lined up that I think will be very interesting. <laughs> we'll talk about my current status in the United States, my weight loss, dating life, I mean, everything. We'll just talk about it all. I have not been shy with talking about the struggles that I've been going through lately, but I haven't been able to exactly express what's been going on. And while I still can't fully do that, I can give you guys at least a little glimpse of what's happening. <laughs> if you are new to my channel and just stumbled across this, Click that subscribe button down below and don't forget to hit the bell because otherwise you probably won't see my videos because YouTube these days, I don't know. Okay, so we're just gonna get started with the questions because, well, we got a lot. The first question that I see is, are you bisexual? <laughs> I am not bisexual. There was one point, I think I was in grade like six and I guess I, I questioned it. I liked my girlfriends, but I, I was like, do I like them like-like? Or like, I, I just didn't know. So I sometimes would think, am I? Do I like girls? But I don't, I don't like girls and I, I don't think I ever really thought that I liked girls, but I was just like, should I wonder what my sexuality is? Like, I, I don't know. I am just straight, just straight. Do you wish you lived with your parents or they lived with you in LA? This is such a weird question to me. I feel like people forget that I'm 24 living on my own and have lived on my own for five years. I don't wish that I still lived with my parents. Obviously that would be backtracking my life. If I was able to move out at 19, it would be sad if I ended up having to live back with my parents. While I would love for them to live in LA, I would like for them to live in LA in their own place. That would be very nice for me. I would love that more than anything. But sadly they live in Canada and people can't just like move from Canada and live here. So that's a bit of a bummer. Were you with Tay on St. Patty's Day? Okay, so I got a lot of questions about this because our stories seemed to line up a little bit. Slash when I say a little bit, they exactly matched. I was with Taylor on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. How is it really to live in LA? I guess it's like, what is it really like to live in LA? Like the good and the bad. Everyone looks at LA like it's like the dream place to live. And I absolutely love living here. I love the city, I love the weather, I love the opportunities. I think it's amazing. Those are the goods. The bads is that it's big, it's big. Like I am friends with a bunch of people that live all over LA. It's just, it's so insane. So it's really hard to see a lot of people because of the distance. So that's hard and it can feel lonely in that sense. But overall, I would say it's a great place. Uh, I just don't think it's a place you live in forever. Have you ever thought about taking the stocking off your neighbor's door for them? Okay, so if you follow me on Instagram, I've been posting on my Instagram story like every two weeks of my neighbor's door. They still have a Christmas stocking on their door. It is the middle of, end of March now and that stocking is still on their door. I see sometimes I'll walk by it and it'll be on the floor like someone had pulled it off and then it'll go right back up on the door. So yes, sometimes I do think I should take it off for them. But also if I did that, I would feel like such an So. I just don't think I can really do it. Though I am tempted. What happened with the guy you went on a date with? Not the most recent one. Okay, so if you guys have been keeping up with my vlogs, I have a separate vlog channel in case you were unaware. I tend to document the dates that I go on, which is weird, but also, I don't know, you guys find it funny, so I keep doing it. So a little while ago, I went on a date and I said it was a really, really good date and then I never talked about it after that. It was a good date. He was cute, he was fun, he was funny. I don't know what else. He was nice. I kept seeing him and I didn't want to like keep talking about it because it just felt weird. But that was going on for a little bit. The last time I saw him was just, I was just like, nah. He came over, we were at my place, we were gonna have like a movie day, and the guy just said a lot of questionable things. And I said this to him while he was at my place. I literally said, you know, you're a little questionable, dude. And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, you just say weird things. Like I was in the middle of telling him a story and he'd be like, shh, shh, shut up, shut up. And I was like, excuse me? And like, he had seemed so fine and decent up until this point that I was just like, what? I kind of like dismissed some of that, although I, in my head was like, red flag, red flag, red flag. But then he kept mocking me and like repeating the things that I had said. And he asked to see one of my videos on this date. He was like, I want to see, you know what you do. So we watched a couple of them, which was so awkward. He said he thought it was really cool. And I was like, okay, sick, sweet. We get to like the last hour of him being over. I don't know, we were talking about something YouTube related. And then he said to me, he was like, am I dating a person or a personality? And I was like, is that rhetorical? Is that a, what kind of question is that? Do you think that I'm like a fake person? Like, is this 
fake. I, I just couldn't understand what he was trying to say. He backtracked a lot after that and he was like, well, I didn't really mean it to be insulting, but like, I see how it probably insulted you. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it wasn't nice. He ended up leaving and I got a text from him that night being like, hey, I'm so sorry. I realized, you know, I, I wasn't on my best behavior, but I'm just really comfortable with you. And I felt like we could joke around. And I was like, dude, I literally replied the next day and I was like, hey, sorry, like this isn't gonna work out. And then that was it. Really awkward, did not love. So that's what happened there. Nick or Joe? Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> I can't decide. I used to be like a Nick girl, but Joe is like so the Nick though. I, no, I can't decide. I, they're either 50-50. Leave your answer down below. I wanna know if you're more Nick or more Joe. Or if by some chance you're a Kevin, like let me know. How do you make money with YouTube and does it provide you financially all the way? How to make money on YouTube. This is a constant question that I get. People don't understand that it's like my job and it's like my full-time job. This is the only thing that I do. I don't have any side jobs or anything like that. This is my sole income. You make money from ads. So when somebody watches a video and an ad plays, the YouTuber gets paid per ad, but most of my income comes from brand sponsorships. So I have a manager and she brings me deals. So she'll be in touch with different companies and she'll email me the offer and we'll go back and forth and decide if it's something that I think could be a cool deal for me and that you know relates to my audience or if it's just way out there and like it's just not a not a not a move. So that's basically where the money comes from. And then also there's another outlet, which is my blog. And I have a lot of affiliate links on there. So if I post an outfit photo on my blog and I have the links to all of the pieces, if you click and buy it, I get commission off of that item. And then on top of that, I also have my merch. So there's all these different you know levels of income that come in from all these different places. So it's not solely just YouTube, but the social media career is my main income. Do you think you'll get a full-time job outside of YouTube anytime soon? No. <laughs> As I just said, like this is my full-time job. There is no reason for me to get another full-time job on top of my full-time job. And this is a really great job for me. I'm making a lot of money doing something that I really enjoy doing and I have zero need to get any other job at the moment. That's not to say this will be forever my sole income because obviously this is the internet and goes up and down. But as of right now, in the foreseeable future, I'm doing just fine. Have you gotten drunk drunk lately? Okay! I don't know what you consider an influence. The influence, the drinking. So yes. Do you smoke weed? I get this question all the time when I do Q and A's, but I always avoid it. But I figure like, we're just gonna be honest here. I have smoked weed. Oh my God, crazy. I will tell you about my first time getting high. Oh my God, this is so weird that I'm gonna put this on the internet. But you know what? We are in California, it's legal. My first time getting high. <laughs> Do you post about going on dates and flaunt your dating life so Taylor sees it? No, I don't even think Taylor watches my vlogs. I don't think he's seen any of that. I post about going on dates because you guys are really interested in seeing that stuff. So that's why I talk about it. Why do you keep going on dates? I feel like you should give yourself a break to love yourself first. Just because I'm going on dates does not mean I don't love myself. Also going on dates doesn't mean that I'm trying to even get into a relationship. I go on dates solely to meet people. I just wanna see what kind of people are out there and have experiences because I've never been out in the dating world and it's just genuinely like, an experience for me. I feel like people need to meet other people to know what's out there, to know what you want. And I don't think that going on dates means anything about how I feel about myself. All right, this is a question I have been asked way too many times and I did address it a couple months ago, but people keep commenting. So have you ever struggled with an eating disorder? I have lost weight. Yes, I am not going to deny that because it's obvious. I look at myself in the mirror and I look smaller than I did. And just because I lost weight, people assume it's because I have an eating disorder, which is very flawed and also very upsetting. No, I have never struggled with an eating disorder. The only thing that I've ever done that was maybe weird to lose weight was I was in, I think it was like my first year of high school. I was friends with these girls and one of them would bring like these weight loss pills to school. And at lunch, we would go into the bathroom and we would take them. I think I maybe only did that for like a week though because the pills were kind of big and I hated swallowing them and I just didn't care enough. So I don't even know if my mom knows that. Maybe she does, I don't know. So it genuinely upsets me when I get comments saying, oh my God, you're sick and you have an eating disorder, get help. It's like, thank you for your concern. I appreciate it, but it's unnecessary. Following up with that, another question. Did you lose this much weight on purpose? The answer is honestly, no. I didn't tell myself, okay, I have to go on a diet. I have to lose a certain amount of weight. Like I never had that mindset. I was at a very comfortable weight. I was fine with how I looked. I, I was 
fine. Everyone says it was so, it's so dramatic and I look so dramatically different. Since my breakup, I have only lost seven pounds and I have not lost a pound in like two months or something like that. Like I've, I've leveled out. I feel like this is my natural weight now and I'll explain why I think that. When I was with my ex-boyfriend, we cooked a lot and we went out a lot and we ate a lot. And whenever we would cook, Taylor and I would have equal portions. So I would be eating the same amount of food as a guy that is 6'2". He was 6'2", I am 5'2". One, barely five one, I'm like five and three quarters. So when you eat the same amount of food as a bigger guy, you tend to like be a little bigger. And I never thought that I was big at all. Like I never thought it was chubby or anything. I was, again, totally fine with my weight. But as soon as uh, we, I, we were in cooking together and I was eating portion sizes that were more fitting to myself and like my small body, it just kind of came off. Like it was not intentional. I would check the scale and I was like, oh my God, what's going on? Because I just didn't even think anything of it. I eat until I'm full. That's literally what I do. Instead of putting like two huge bowls of whatever the heck we made and just like eating it all, because if it's in front of me, I will literally eat the entire thing. I don't care if I'm full. I just make a nice little bowl. And then if I'm not full, I'll have another little bowl until I'm full. I eat until my body tells me that's enough, I'm good. <laughs> because of that, I lost weight. But I haven't lost weight in a while because I've been sticking to that and listening to my body and what it wants and what it needs. I don't know, it, I just, I hope this didn't come off aggressive or too defensive because really that's not the goal. I just trying to explain. That's about it with the eating stuff. Spill tea about your ex roommate. Still dying for the story time. I was gonna do a story time, but then I, I don't wanna put it out there. So I'm just gonna put it at the end of this video. We're gonna sum it up real fast. One night we were all drunk, doing drinking games. She went to bed, her boyfriend came to my room, hit on me, I said no. Um, after that he would like, say really mean things to me, would just be absolutely horrific to me to the point where I didn't feel safe in my own home. And I couldn't put that online because she didn't know. I don't even know if she knows now that that happened. I never told her because it wasn't my place to get in the middle of their relationship and she was gonna take a side no matter what. So that's what happened. And then I moved out within the month and I never saw them again. On to another tough topic. Are you in danger or have you been of getting deported? <sighs> I hate talking about this. This is like what's really been on my mind. In case you don't know, I'm from Canada and I have lived here for five years. I came to school here, I did school, and then after that I got a visa. So I have been here on a three-year visa, which expires tomorrow. After that I have 200 days that I'm allowed to remain in the States, but if I leave the country I can't come back. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't even tell you what it feels like that my entire life that I've built the last five years could just be destroyed. So we've been working with a lawyer for the last year and I should be finding out this week the status of my life here, essentially. It's hard for me to talk about, which is why I haven't talked about it much and I also just don't want to put it out there. I don't want to like put out anything negative about that because then I'm worried that I'm not going to get it because of that and like this is literally pending. I could find out today, I could find out tomorrow, I could find out the next day and every day leading up to that has destroyed me. I'll be feeling fine and then all of a sudden anxiety will hit and then I'll just be destroyed for the rest of the day. I, I can't even explain how it feels. So that's essentially what's been going on just to sum it up really quickly because I don't want to get too in depth about it. it I'll, I'll talk more about you know, all of that, once I find out the status of my visa, I'll give you the whole process and everything. But as of right now, it's just like, like even talking about it is put it such a pit in my stomach. <sighs> okay, on to the next. <laughs> Do you ever get insecure about having smaller breasts? I guess this like goes back to the, the, the weight loss thing. It's funny. I didn't have smaller breasts, boobs. Boobs is a better word. Up until like, you know, a few months ago, I had pretty solid boobs. I was a 32C, full C cup. So there's some solid boobs there. The boobs are smaller and that's so sad. I like never thought about that. I didn't even realize it was happening until one day I felt like my bra was really big on me and I got a 32B and it fit me and I was like, ah, there go the boobs. Honestly, I'm not even heartbroken over it. I weirdly feel more confident about my boobs since they got smaller, which is really weird because I always thought like I wanted bigger boobs. I like go out braless now and I just don't care because it just feels like they're like smaller and perkier now. I don't know if that makes sense, but I, I don't feel insecure about it. It's really odd. The last question I'm going to answer is one that I got a lot on my vlog channel lately. Do you feel like you're leading Brian on because you like the attention? Wow, the answer is no. Brian and I are very open with each other. We have communicated and talked about literally everything. I mean, we both are aware of everything in each other's lives. Brian doesn't think I'm leading him on because I straight up tell him how I feel. I know how he feels, he knows how I feel, and we are just friends that like to flirt with each other. It's like not crazy at all. That's that's it. I don't think that I lead him on at all. I am very honest with him. He knows exactly how I felt from the beginning of our friendship. I like the attention, obviously. Who doesn't like attention? And so does he. You know, we're like each other's flirty buddies. So 
that's that. And that's that Q&A. That is it. This is it. We've done it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I feel like this was a very, very honest Q&A talking about literally everything. Yeah, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you would like to see more honest Q&As like this where we just like sit down and chat about all these fun things. And if you made it to the end, comment down below. Uh, oh my God, I can't believe you hooked up with Nick Jonas. <laughs> Obviously it didn't. Not saying I wouldn't, but I... <laughs> He's married, but it'll be really funny to see all of the comments. So if you get to the end, comment down that below. But yeah, I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.